When it comes to building any kind of login system, we usually have an email to verify who we are trying to log in as and a password to validate that we are who we say we are. Now, if you are using a library like Express, you may be able to get away with using a bunch of if statements inside of your routes. However, the goal in this video is to make your code clear, concise and readable as possible. And that is where methods and middleware in Mongoose come into play. It helps separating our concerns by keeping our Mongoose logic inside of our Mongoose models while keeping our Express logic clear and simple. Maybe I want to hash a password before saving it into the database or maybe Maybe when someone requests for a user's information, I don't want to accidentally send their login details to the client. All of these are problems that methods and middleware in Mongoose will be solving. And I'm assuming that you already are familiar with the basics of Mongoose and Express, and if you're not, don't worry about that, because I got you covered, as my previous videos on this channel cover just that. Now before we get started, if you enjoy my content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, as one subscription is the equivalent to approximately 0.5% of my subscribers. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to be showing you the file structure in which we are going to be coding our logging in and out system. Now inside of my project folder, I have an index.js file that is requiring a mongoose slash config file and also a user model. Now the mongoose slash config file will be inside of my DB directory and that will just connect my Node.js app to the MongoDB database. Whereas inside of the models directory, there I will find a user.js file which will contain the user model. Now the schema for the user model will contain a name and email field as well as a created at and updated at timestamp. And just a little bit of validation to confirm that we are dealing with an actual name and an actual email. Now getting started with the code, we are going to be creating a third field and that is the password field. We're going to give it a type of string, set it to required and also validate that its value.length is greater than or equal to 8. This will ensure that the password that is being matched with the schema is greater than or equal to 8 characters. Now you might be asking, hold on a moment, are you going to be storing the password password in the database as plain text? And the answer to that is obviously no. What we want to do is create two routes in our index.js file, one for creating a user and one for logging into an already existing account. Now our create user route will be called forward slash sign up and what we want to be able to do is before we add the user to the database is to hash their password. Now to complete that process we will need to be using middleware. As for the second route to log into an existing user, well that would be forward slash login and we want to ensure that the document we are getting back from the database does not contain the password hash once we created the user's account. So now inside of my index.js file, I'm going to require express and also use the express.json middleware, which not to be confused with the mongoose middleware that we are going to be creating very shortly. I'm going to listen to port 3000 and then create two routes, one to forward slash sign up and the second to forward slash login. So the first one we're going to work on is forward slash sign up. Now my sign up route will have an asynchronous function that is accepting a request and a response as an argument and I'm going to create a constant called user and set that equal to new user and take the request dot body. And the request body will be a JSON object that I'm going to send from my client side that contains the information to create the user. And we're going to store that into the user constant. Next, I'm going to open up a try catch block to catch any errors if they occur and await the user.save to save it to the database. Then I'm going to send a response with a status code of 201 indicating we have created a document in the database and then send the user information that we have just created back to the client. I'm also going to send a response in my catch block to catch any errors and that will have a status code of 400 indicating that the information that I have been provided from the client side is incorrect and then I'm also going to send back the error object. Now I'm going to run Nodemon to start up my server and I'm going to pull up Postman and Robo3T. Now inside of Postman I'll create a new post request and inside of the request body I will send a name, email and password field. 
and as I send off my request, I should get back a response. So everything is working at this point. So what is left to do is to add the middleware to hash the password before it is being saved to the database. And where we add this middleware will be inside of our user model. So inside of the user model, I'm going to scroll down and type in user schema dot pre. And this is a method that will take in two arguments. The first argument, I'm just going to type in there save and the second argument will be a callback function that will execute prior to saving. Now there are plenty of options that I could place in there other than save. For example, we can provide validate and that will execute prior any validation and we can also change this to remove and that will execute prior anything that is being removed from the database. Now I've left a link in the description for this video to the documentation for Mongoose on middleware but the most common kind of middleware that we will see is pre-save, we want to execute something, and in this case is hashing our password. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off my server and run npm install bcrypt. Now bcrypt is an npm package that makes hashing passwords easy, and we're going to see how to use it in this example. So instead of typing in callback for my second argument, I'm going to create an asynchronous function. Now one thing to note when using Mongoose methods is to never provide the second argument as an arrow function, because arrow functions do not come with their own this keyword, whereas regular functions in JavaScript do. Now if you do want to understand more about why that is, I do have a video on my channel titled 5 Misconceptions About JavaScript, and you could go ahead and check it out to learn the differences between arrow functions and regular functions and why this does not exist on the arrow function. However, I'm going to use a regular function and this function will take in one argument and that will be next. Now next will be a function in itself and this will allow us to continue executing our code after the middleware has completed executing. In other words, it works exactly the same way as express middleware. Now you might be wondering how exactly does this function get access to the user schema and the answer to that is not via an argument like express middleware, instead it will be located on the this keyword, which is why we are using a regular function. So I'm going to create a constant called user and set that equal to this, just so we don't confuse ourselves. Now creating the user constant is optional and I just created it so whenever we refer to the user, we type in user and not this, because this refers to the user model. Then I'm going to create an if statement and inside of the if statement I want to check if the password has been modified. Now we can use validator to validate if the password has been modified by typing in user dot is modified and between brackets we'll just type in password. This will check if the password has been modified and if that is the case then we want to set the user dot password equal to the hashed password. So we are going to set it equal to await bcrypt dot hash and we are awaiting it because hashing is a time consuming process and therefore it is asynchronous. And the hash method takes in two arguments. The first is the string that we want to hash and in our case it is user.password and the second argument will be the salted round. Now because hashing is a time consuming process, we don't want to put in a large number but we also don't want to put in a small number that it's easy enough to unhash our password. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as eight. And now if I send out a request via postman, I will get back a response and my password will come back to me hashed. Now that we understand the basics of Mongoose middleware, we now go into shift gears to understand more about Mongoose methods. So I'm going to go to my login route and from there, I'm going to open up a try catch block to catch any errors. And inside of it, I'm going to create a constant called user and await user.find1 and find the user with the email that I've received from my request body. Then I'm going to open up an if statement and check if the user does not have an email, then I want to throw an error with an incorrect email or password message. Now the reason why I'm being vague here that the email or the password is incorrect is because we don't want to specify to the person who is trying to log in that they got the email incorrect or the password incorrect for security purposes. 
Then I'm going to create another constant called isValid and await bcrypt.compare. Now the compare method will take in two arguments. The first is the password from the request body, which is the plain text password. And the second will be the user.password, which is the hashed password. And the compare method will compare the plain text password to the hashed password. And if it is a match, then it will return true. Otherwise it will return false. And therefore I'm going to open up another if statement and check if is valid is false, then in that case, I'm going to throw an error with the exact same message, incorrect email or password. And if the first if statement has passed and the second if statement has passed, then I'll just go ahead and send back the response to the user because the user clearly typed in the correct password. Now this is where Mongoose methods get involved. You see the problem is, all of this code is cramping up my route and I might want to be able to find a user by their credentials in other routes as well. And I don't want to be able to copy the code from one route to another all the time because of the dry concept, don't repeat yourself. So I'm going to create a method on my model, just like where we have user.find1 or user.find many, I'm going to create one called user.findbyCredentials. Now inside of my user model document, I'm going to go at the bottom and create my find by credentials method by typing in user schema dot statics dot find by credentials. And I'll set it equal to an asynchronous function. Now notice that I'm creating an arrow function and not a regular function. And that is because in this example, I am not using the this keyword. So inside of my arrow function, I will go ahead and copy the code that was already inside of my route for finding a user and checking if the password is correct and place all of that inside of my find by credentials method. And because I no longer have access to the request body, I would have to pass it through to my find by credentials method. But instead of providing the entire request body, I'm just going to provide the email and the password as argument because that is the only information we need. And therefore I'm just going to refactor my code based upon the email and password. And I'll also make sure not to forget to return my user. And now inside of my login route, I could simply create a constant called user and set that equal to await user.findbyCredentials and give it two values. One is the email and the second is the password. And now if I test it out in Postman, I should be able to create a post request for my login route and send an email and password as JSON and get back a response with the user's information. But there is one problem here, and that is after we compare our password with the hashed password, it is still sending back the hashed password to the client, which is a security risk. And therefore I'm going to create another mongoose method to prevent this from happening. Now the second method I'm going to create in mongoose is called remove sensitive user fields. Now you can call it whatever you like. If this is too long for you, go ahead and give it a different name, but I'm going to type in user schema dot methods this time, and then remove sensitive user fields. Now, maybe you noticed something different, or maybe you did not notice that this time I wrote down user schema dot methods rather than user schema dot statics. If you did not notice that, pay attention to me, boy. I'm not just talking to him or head roll. Because this is where I explain the difference between methods that reside on the statics object and methods that reside on the methods object. So earlier when we created our find by credentials method, we created it on the statics object because the statics object gives us access to the model itself. So for example, the find one and find many methods that we use are methods built into Mongoose that reside on the statics object. Mongoose allows us to build our own methods and add them to the statics object. And these methods would help us query the database by attaching it to the model itself. However, when we create a method that resides on the methods object, well, these are the methods that we can use after we have found the document or documents in which we are looking for. So to put things simply, whenever you want to create a method to query the database, create that method on the statics object. And whenever you want to create a method on the documents that have been found, then create it on the methods object. So back to my remove sensitive user fields method, I'm going to set it equal to a regular asynchronous function. And that is because it has access to the this keyword. 
Next, I'm going to create a constant called user and set it equal to this, same as we done in our middleware method. And then I'm going to create a constant called user object and set that equal to user dot to object. And this will convert the user into an object so I can delete certain fields. Next, I'm going to delete the password field by typing in delete user object dot password then I'm going to return the user object. And finally, inside of the find by credentials method, I'm going to return the user, but I'm going to attach to it the method dot remove sensitive user fields. And this will just ensure that once I return the user to the client, the client will not get the hashed password. Now, if I go ahead and test it out in Postman, you will find that the password is no longer returned in the response. And also, if I type in the wrong password, I will get the error email or password is incorrect. And that's pretty much it for Mongoose Part 3. In the next video, we are going to be taking a look at JWTs because nobody wants to be typing in their password whenever they try to connect to a route that is behind all authentication. So please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this and on that bombshell, thanks for watching.